Translation Demo. SDL Manage Translation is SDL's cloud-based translation management platform, which provides the following capabilities. An online web portal for easily creating and managing translation projects, centralized translation memories to reuse previously translated content, centralized terminology glossaries for greater brand consistency, integration with our state-of-the-art machine translation engines, optional use of SDL's ISO-certified translation services, powerful reporting capabilities, including a dashboard and business intelligence reports, a growing set of connectors to many content management systems, and a powerful API for connecting other systems. All of this using our secure cloud technology. Let's now use a standard web browser to access the SDL Manage Translation login page. Let's pretend I am Alex, a translation project manager from the company Acadian. In order to log in to SDL Manage Translation, I will enter my credentials. First my username and then password and then click on login. Once you log in, you arrive to the SDL Manage Translation dashboard page. This page provides an overview of a user's translation projects. The three columns at the top of this page show all the user's translation projects. The first column shows the projects that are ready for approval. The second one shows the projects that are in progress, that is, being translated or reviewed by the client. And the third column shows the projects that have been completed and are ready to download. The bottom of the page shows graphs and statistics on the user's translation projects. The first graph shows the total number of words being translated over the period of time considered. The second graph shows the number of words being translated into the different target languages. This graph shows the number of projects translated across the last three months. And finally, this pie chart displays the translation memory leverage from the different matching bands. Let's now create a new translation project by clicking on the Create Project button. We first need to give a name to the project. Let's call it Printer User Manual. Next, we have the ability to provide a description or instructions on the project. And then we can set a due date for the project, selecting a date by which you expect the translated content to be delivered. Next, we have to select a project option. Project options are configured specifically for each SDL Managed Translation client, and they represent sets of parameters for the translations, such as translation memories, workflows, users, languages, etc. As you can see, selecting a different project option adjusts the project parameters, such as the source language and the target languages. Since we are going to translate a user manual, let's select the technical documentation project option. There is only one source language available in this project option, so let's go now and select our target languages, for instance, German and French, after that, we need to fill in a number of fields that have been defined according to the client-specific requirements. 
These fields are used to capture additional metadata for the project to be used for reporting purposes or they are used to fine-tune the translation process. As you can see, this is very flexible. It's possible to define checkboxes, text fields, and pull-down menus. The last thing we need to do in order to create a project is to select some files for translation. In this case, we're going to browse or local drive and select a user guide Word file. Once selected, the file is immediately uploaded to the system and marked as translatable. We can also browse and select other types of content which are not set up as translatable contents and which will then be added as reference material to be used as contextual information by the translators. We're almost done now. We only need to click on create the project to actually start the project creation. And that's it. When I click on OK, I'm taken back to the dashboard page and I can see already in the projects to approve column my printer user manual project has appeared. If I now click on the project I'm taken to the all projects page with the filter projects to approve applied. The tile here shows an overview of my project and I can click on full project details to obtain more information. This shows the word count for each translation memory leveraging band for each language. If there were multiple files, I could see the details per file. And on the right, I see the calculation of the cost of the translation for each language along with the savings obtained thanks to the translation memory. And here below, I see the calculation of the total cost for the translation with additional costs like project management added. Here on the bottom left, I have the possibility of downloading the project quote in PDF format or in Excel format. Thanks to this quote, I can decide to either approve or cancel the project by clicking on delete. Let's now approve it. And when I click OK, you can see that the tile is grayed out because it has moved to the projects in progress. So here is my project now with status in progress. In the background, the translation files have been made available to the translators designated for the translation of these files. Let's have a quick peek at how easy it is now for the translators to start the translation of the files. This is SDL Trado Studio, the desktop translation environment used by the translators. The translators only need to check their inbox to see the jobs that have been assigned to them for translation. Here is the user guide file that I have sent for translation in my translation job. And I can just click on download to have it downloaded to my machine where I can start actually performing the translation. Once the download is complete, I can double click on the file name to go to the files view and then double click on the file itself to go to the translation environment. This is where I'm supposed to perform the translation, but in our case, I'm just going to go back here. And once the translation is complete, 
the translator can click on upload to upload it back to the platform. And then it's just a matter of clicking on submit to move the file to the next step in the workflow. Let's now log in as another user who is assigned to perform the client review step in the workflow. And you will see that the user interface is slightly different. This shows only a list of the files that need to be reviewed. And when I click on the file for my French translation of the user guide, I'm taken to the online review interface where I can review the translation and post comments on the segments or on the file itself. So it's fairly straightforward to add a comment on the segment like this. And there's also the ability to obtain a preview for the content. What's going to happen here, since it's a Word document, the system is going to rebuild the Word file with the translations found in the right column and will download it to my machine. So I can now just open the Word document that's been downloaded to my machine. And you see that it is uh, partially translated since I did not fully complete the translation and you can also see that the comments that were made are directly visible in the Word document. Once I have completed my review I can just click on finished. I have the ability to write uh, one final comment and then once I click on finished the system will continue the workflow, rebuild the translated file and make it available for download. Let's now log out and log in again as Alex. And you can see that my printer user manual project is now in the projects to download column. If I click on it, I'm taken to the tile for the project and I can here just click on download to trigger the download of the translated files. And I can now confirm that I have correctly downloaded the translated files or I can uh, choose to uh, not mark it as complete yet and do that later on. This completes the project round trip. Let's have a look now at some additional features of SDL Managed Translation. First, let's look at connectors. Instead of selecting files for translation from your local drive, you can use one of our connectors instead. You can see here the connectors that are currently available and more connectors are forthcoming. In order to use a connector, you first need to authenticate once with the service. Like this. And then you have the ability to browse the corresponding content repository. In this case, I can go to my documents folder and select the file I want translated. And when I click on OK, the file is uploaded to SDL Managed Translation, ready to be sent along with the project for translation. 
all these enabled connectors work in the same manner, allowing you to browse the content repositories to select files to be included in the translation project. We also have embedded connectors where you send the content for translation directly from the content management system without having to create a manual project from the SDL Managed Translation portal. Before we conclude this demo, let's have a quick look at the reporting functionality. The first option is to download the reporting data in the form of an Excel file. So I can download the data export and this then downloads an Excel file to my machine. So here is an example of such an Excel file. As you can see, it contains all the project information on the project level, on the different languages for each file, and it contains also the cost information as well as the metadata elements. There is an even better solution, which is to use our API and provide it open data feed to connect Microsoft Power BI, for instance, or any other business intelligence tool to your SDL Managed Translation environment. You can then build dashboards like the one you can see here or any other type of report you might be interested in. This concludes our SDL Managed Translation demo. If you have any question, please contact your SDL sales representative.